So far in this unit of motion, we've been talking about how things move. And one of the key concepts that we've really been hitting at is this idea of accelerating motion. So motion that is changing its velocity. How you describe that in a displacement graph or a velocity graph. And then in the last lesson, how do you use the kinematic equations to help you relate the different properties, the SUVAT variables of motion. Today we're gonna to focus specifically on one primary form of accelerating motion and that is free fall. Something that you are probably pretty familiar with. If you drop something or throw something, you have seen free fall in action. It is when an object accelerates downward due to gravity. Specifically, we're gonna talk uh, and define this idea of free fall the way that a physicist would. Because free fall, all it really is, is a major assumption that we're gonna be using to help us describe and mathematically determine an object's motion. Free fall, the way we're going to define it here in this class, is when an object is experiencing only the force of gravity. So only, the only force acting on that object, if it's in free fall, means that it's gravity. That means that it is not being held up, it is not being accelerated by some sort of jetpack or external force, but that also means no air resistance. And this is the biggest assumption because, of course, here in our everyday lives, like air resistance is a thing, like air exists in our atmosphere. Um, so as things are moving, especially really, really fast, air resistance will start to play into it. We're not going to worry about that yet. We'll start talking about that a little bit in our forces unit. But for now, let's assume no air resistance. And as long as it's pretty slow, not moving super fast, this assumption will get us pretty close um, and close enough to make pretty good approximations uh, for the, the object's motion. So if there's no air resistance, it turns out that everywhere on Earth experiences uh, the same or relatively the same acceleration. Uh, and not only does the location not change it a whole lot, but the object uh, doesn't change it. So you could have a bowling ball or you could have a feather. If there's no air resistance, they will fall at exactly the same rate. Joe's experiment was simple. He took a heavy object and a light one and dropped them at the same time to see which fell fastest. Now in this case, the feathers fell to the ground at a slower rate than the bowling ball because of air resistance. So in order to see the true nature of gravity, we have to remove the air. We are go for drop. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, cameras on, 2, 1, release. So just to be really clear here, this video is in slow motion. Taking out the air didn't make it slow down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Look at exactly. That. They came down exactly the same. Another really nice example of this is from one of the Apollo missions where they drop a feather and a hammer at exactly the same time. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? 
How about that? So, here on Earth, uh, like I said, we do have air, obviously. Uh, if we didn't, we would have all sorts of other problems. But for slow, slower moving things, we're not going to see enough air resistance to make a huge difference. So when we're talking here on Earth, uh, we are going to be using one constant as our form of gravity. And we say that all objects will accelerate downward at negative 9.81 meters per second squared. That negative sign here is just indicating direction. So that's saying if positive is up, then down, the direction that accelerating, uh, that gravity is accelerating must be negative. Now to be clear, this 9.81 is a constant the way that we're gonna use it, but it's not actually a constant. 9.81 changes depending on where you are on Earth. Uh, there's a cool little widget here powered by Wolfram Alpha where you can type in any location and it will tell you the local gravitational acceleration. So if we were to type in St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, it's computing here to be 9.80536 meters per second squared. If I type somewhere more dramatic like Mount Everest, I could find the local acceleration uh, somewhere much different, uh, and it's something like 9.76467. Um, so on the surface of Earth, gravitational acceleration does actually change, um, but for the most part, it averages out to about 9.81. So that's what we're going to be using in this class. So we're going to use this value of acceleration of gravity in one of our word problems. So if you remember what we talked about in the last video, working on kinematic equations, one of the key uh, components, one of the, the main things that we did every single time was we listed our SUVAT variables, um, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. Now there are a few different just generic scenarios that you should be pretty familiar with when it comes to free fall. So the first of which is what if you just drop something? So say you go to the top of a diving board or a building, you put out your arm and then you you just let go uh, and let it fall towards the earth. And you'll see that it accelerates downward. Um, a couple important things here. Number one is if you were to drop it, then the moment you let go, it has an instantaneous velocity of zero. So it starts at zero and it's speeding up from not moving because you are just holding it. The other thing that's important to know is that the acceleration is a known acceleration. If we're talking here on earth, we're going to say that that acceleration is a negative 9.1 meters per second squared. Again, the 9.81 is negative because we're considering down to be the negative direction. Another scenario is what if you were to throw something up into the air? Now you're probably pre pretty familiar with the idea. It goes up. I'll play that animation again. It goes up, it goes up, slows down, and then speeds up coming back down. A couple things here. You probably are pretty familiar with the idea that at the very top, for a split second when it turns around its motion is zero it's not moving at all so it has a velocity of zero meters per second now that is really useful to us because we know for a fact that the velocity at the highest point in a ball's trajectory is zero so if we can access that point we can solve some more interesting problems using kinematics which means that we want access to this point here so if this is the whole journey going up and then back down again, the thing that we're going to do most often is to look at either only the first half or only the second half of the problem. If we're looking only at the first half, that means that the final velocity is zero because we're starting it when it's let go and then we're stopping when it gets to the highest point. If we're looking at the second half, that means that the uh, initial velocity is zero because it's starting at the very top and then ending at the lowest point. In both cases, the acceleration is still a negative 9.81 because it's accelerating in the downward direction. It's a little tricky to think about in the fact that it can be moving up and still be accelerating negative. But one way to think of that idea is you know it's slowing down. And the reason it's slowing down is because the velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. They're counteracting each other, causing it to slow down. On the way down, the velocity is positive or velocity is negative and acceleration is negative, so they speed up because they're in the same direction.
the final scenario is what if you just throw something down? Uh, so you chuck it downward with some initial velocity. It means you don't necessarily know the initial velocity. You know that it's some velocity that you gave it, um, but you don't have it for sure. So really the only thing you know for sure if you throw something down is that its acceleration is a negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So as a reminder, these are the kinematic equations. We're gonna use the one that uh, makes sense for the scenario. And what I mean by that is, it's the one that doesn't involve the variable we don't need. Um, and we'll see that in an example here. So say you go to the top of the Empire State Building. It's about 380 meters tall. How fast uh, will a marble be going if you drop it? Uh, how fast will it be going once it hits the ground? So from this problem, we can determine a couple different things. Number one, uh, we are looking for the final velocity, so V. We know that the initial velocity is zero because this is one of those drop problems. We also know that the acceleration of gravity is a negative 9.81, and we know that the building's height is 380 meters. Um, that means that the only variable we don't know or don't need is time. So one equation here does not involve time, um, and that is this third equation. V squared is equal to U squared, plus two AS. So that's the equation that I care about. I'm gonna plug in the things that I know. The final, or my initial velocity is zero, two times negative 9.81 times 380. Now, if you plug this into your calculator, you're actually gonna get an error. Um, and the reason that you get an error here, um, go ahead and try to guess. Why would you get an error for this particular problem? If you plugged in this value, um, your calculator is going to be trying to take a square root of a negative number. Um, can't do that, which actually indicates that we did something wrong in our problem. Uh, if you remember, we defined up as being positive, down as being negative. Um, and our marble is starting at the top and moving downward all the way to the ground, which means that even though the building is 380 meters tall, we would define our displacement for the marble as a negative 380 because it went down 380. If I adjust my equation here by just putting a negative in instead, these negatives cancel out. We have a positive within that square root and we end up um, with a final velocity of 86.3 meters per second, but it's moving downward, so it's in the negative direction. Um, now, if you presented to me your final answer as a positive, in this case, I would understand what you meant is the magnitude of the velocity. Um, but just to be consistent here, I'm reporting this as a negative um, because it is moving downward. Uh, now for the record, a marble actually probably wouldn't get that fast. Uh, that's now we're at the speeds where air resistance would start to matter. Um, but as an academic exercise for now, we're gonna still assume that air resistance doesn't exist. We are in perfect free fall. All right, uh, another problem. Say we are shooting a basket and we wanna know the vertical velocity that a basketball uh, it requires to go up three meters. Um, just a quick animation for what that looks like. If you throw a ball, obviously that isn't a basketball, it's much, much smaller. Uh, it starts out pretty fast, slows down to a stop. Um, we are looking for the initial velocity here, um, the vertical velocity that's required, but we are given some information here as well. We know that at its highest point is what we're gonna care about, the highest point is our final velocity, zero meters per second. And it's three meters to get from where you throw it to its highest point. That's how high we want it to go. So our displacement is three. In this case, we are gonna keep it as a positive three because it's moving upward the whole time. It's not, not the scenario where you're dropping a marble, you're throwing a basketball up. Uh, we have two knowns and one unknown. We should get one more known variable. And again, this is free fall. So we're gonna assume negative 9.81. Uh, if something is in free fall, if it's free of any other object, this isn't a car accelerating. This is something that's falling or being thrown. We're gonna assume a negative 9.81, which means no time. Again, this is gonna give us the same equation that we talked about before, um, this third equation. Now, if I plug that in instead and then uh, solve for what I'm looking for, I'm looking for the initial velocity. So I'm gonna plug in what I know. Um, and then here, I can uh, plug this into my calculator and take the square root. 
to solve for u by itself, and I'll find that u is about 7.67 meters per second. One last example here, and this is the one that throws people off the most. If you flip a coin and you catch it, uh, it's in the air for a total of say, let's, let's say 0.6 seconds. I wanna know how high it went. And when I say it's in the air for a total of 0.6 seconds, I mean that to go up and to go back down as 0.6 seconds. Um, so a couple of things here. I am looking for a displacement, how high uh, is in meters, like what's this vertical distance. Uh, I know still that acceleration is a negative 9.81. And I know that as highest point here, that's zero. Um, this is a there and back problem and up and down. Uh, so the most useful thing for me is going to be to split this into first half, second half sort of problem. Um, I'm going to look at the second half in this case. Uh, you could look at the first half as well. In this case, you're going to run into an issue trying to find the right equation if you're looking just at the first half. Um, so here the second half will just be easier. You can always shift in the middle if you choose to change, change your path. Now, like I said before, if we were to look at the whole journey here, that whole journey is 0.6 seconds. But we just decided that our initial velocity is zero, which means our journey actually starts at the top. So this 0.6 seconds is really can be divided into two halves, a 0.3 seconds to go up and a 0.3 seconds to go down. Since we are starting at the top and going down in our SUVAT calculation, we're going to look, you look, like, look at that second half, 0.3 seconds, and then plug that in as our time. Um, so again, that is half the time uh, that it would take total, and that's important here. Um, then our final velocity is something that we don't need. So which equation uh, would be the correct one to solve this problem? Looking at my options, there's only one equation that does not use the final velocity, and it's actually not that one, it's the second one here. Um, so S is equal to UT plus one half AT squared. Plugging in what I know, um, I have one half times negative 9.81 times three or 0.3 squared. And technically that would give me a negative number um, because that's the distance it would fall because I'm looking at the second half of the problem. So it's going down. Uh, but I'm gonna report this as a positive because what it's asking here is how high did it go? And then positive makes a little bit more sense. Uh, and that is 0 0.441 meters high. All right, so from this lesson, the key things that you should be taking away from it is you should be able to identify this constant acceleration due to gravity. So you should really recognize that number 9.81. It is technically actually given to you in your data booklet. So it's not one that you have to memorize, but it's one that you probably will memorize. Uh, it's not too hard to remember and you'll use it enough uh, that is pretty consistent. You should also be able to interpret a free fall problem uh, to identify uh, hidden values. So knowing that if you drop it, it starts at zero, uh, that sort of thing. And then you should be able to use the kinematic equations to solve for a free fall uh, problem, especially looking out for those ones that go up and down, knowing to either divide the, the time in half or multiply it, depending on what you're looking for.